Welcome to the YouTube interview series, how the COVID-19 virus has affected the arts and beyond. Today, we have a very, very special guest, Paul Vasterly, Artistic Director of Nashville Ballet. Hi, Paul. Hi, Brian. Hi, Brian. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Nice now, you. Paul, it's good to see you also, and thank you for being here today, Paul. Um, you know, you have a company of 25 company members of dancers, 12 in the, in the um, probably your training program, mm -hmm. and you company. have the staff, you have about 35 people that you've uh -huh. had to make adjustments for. How's that been going for you? Well, obviously there's a lot of, um, of not knowing and trying to uh, model out scenarios that you, you know, this, if this happens and this happens, it's a lot of if then kind of uh, thinking and, um, you know, the process has been really kind of, um, it's always ongoing really. So trying to be able to be flexible enough to um, kind of, uh, keep fulfilling our mission. I mean, that's one of the things that we go back to a lot is uh, make sure we're fulfilling our mission, which is, I'm not gonna recite it for you, but it's basically to inspire the people of our community to go back to that uh, sort of edict, I guess. It's sort of our, our you know, our rule, our way of being. And, um, you know, we, we're right now thinking about how we're pivoting and, and but still doing that. That's the most important thing for us. And as this has started, we actually um, established some um, kind of guiding principles. The executive director, whose name is Lisa French, who's amazing, and I, who, who we lead the company together. And we came up with, and along with a task force of the board, came up with a couple of statements that you helped us in this um, coronavirus uh, crisis and those were you know, we want to and they're not necessarily in order of importance they kind of live together which is um, uh, we want to be able to take care of our people our our artists and our staff and then pay them at least to the end of the fiscal year hopefully longer and then and then um, the second one is making sure that the organization can um, exist and thrive post this uh, situation because there will be an after it might it'll it'll be different than where we are now or where we were our, our, our you know world views are going to change the way we think about things are changing but there is going to be an after and we want to make sure that uh, the organization is still able to fulfill its mission um, when when we come out of it and you know we want to keep doing it as best we can while we're in it so you know, I was, you know, if you go to your site, you've done some virtual training, you've done live on demand. Do you have your uh, professional dancers doing these classes and staff? Do you have a mixture? Yeah, it's, it's kind of, um, it's been, you know, again, we're, we're, we're a little bit doing a lot of bit of improv, <laughs> creative and a little bit of punting here and there. Um, we were, we had, um, we had to cancel the whole remainder of our regularly scheduled season. And we were hoping to perhaps do something in late May, uh, sort of a hybrid program with the company. I'm not sure if that's going to be able to happen or not. It's still the, the, the jury's still out on that in terms of the way the um, sort of the world opens up and if we can make sure we can have safety and, you know, it's a, a big issue we have is, of course, gathering in groups. I mean, it's what we do, yes. right? So the sure. basic to what we do is gathering in groups and gathering in groups is a bit of the problem. This is a, a big part of the problem right now. So just trying to work around that. So um, anyway, the company agreed to move their weeks, the weeks that were left on their contract much later um, into the year. So we actually, had, they went on layoff right in mid-March and then they're coming back on Monday. We had, we had of course hoped to go into the studio, but that's not gonna be possible because there's, we're still on, um, what do you, it's not, I don't call it, they call it lockdown here, but yeah. it's, you know, it's basically, it's basically that stay home orders. So what we're doing is um, we've come up with a, a virtual season of eight weeks up into the end of May. And we're basically pulling out some um, uh, ballets that uh, were just done. And then some, some older ones from the, from the, from the, um, uh, the storage place. Um, 
the uh, um, and also we're adding things to it. So last weekend we did um, we were able to do do a concert talk, which we'd done back in um, I guess it was in last year, last spring, and um, uh, the Balanchine Trust allowed us to do that. The, the publishers allowed us to do that, but we only did it for our people. We didn't do it for the whole world. We're just doing it for our our subscribers and our multi-buyer ticket people, our school families, of course. Um, and they're sort of our family and they only get to see it for, there's a limited amount of time. So it's pretty special. It's called Saturday Night, uh, Na wait a minute. Saturday Night with Nashville Ballet is what it's called. And we have eight things planned. Next weekend, we're doing um, a ballet by Matthew Neenan called There I Was that he just choreographed for us out in, in February, a beautiful work. And it's by the composer, Christina Spinet. So that will be a stream to, again, just to our own people. And they, they get the link on Saturday evening and then it, it lasts until Sunday evening. So they can watch it anytime in that period. So next week when the company comes back, they obviously can't be in the studio. So we're doing some, um, you know, directed uh, creative things at home. Um, four of the dancers are choreographers and they're they're kind of stepping into the role of choreographers and we have this one of the programs that we canceled is called emergence i don't know brian if you were ever around when we did emergence Long uh, yes i think so i remember right yes. yeah, i may have nice. you may have danced in that we've been doing it for many many nice. many years yes. which is really it's really about creative creativity mm -hmm. and emerging arts right so um and really really about process and and um taking risks and so the the Four choreographers are, um, we've assigned them, or they've picked, you know, four or five, maybe five dancers from the company, and those are their people in their piece, and they will have kind of quote unquote rehearsals uh, by Zoom, or they'll have um, um, directed uh, kind of improv, and then they have to film themselves, mm -hmm. and then they send their films to the choreographers, and the choreographers are then going to edit, edit them into dances. And um, it should be really interesting. It's it's kind of an extension of the emergence program. It is always about, you know, trying to work on something new and different. So we're also going to show those within the context of our series too. And I've done a couple um, myself. I've done a couple of uh, of little dances that I um, where I where I ask some of them to do improv for me and in specific places and specific ways, and then I've, I've woven them into into dances with different music and. So, you know, we're really trying to keep creativity alive. We have a lot of things we're doing with the dancers for the for our donors and connecting them to our donors. We're doing do Zoom chats. So we're really trying to use the time we have with them uh, wisely. Uh, so many times the marketing folk and the development people want to have our company members connect to the community directly, right? Which is a great thing. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, um, I am never able to really let them have full access because we're rehearsing, you know, we're working. So this is a, a there's a little bit less kind of um, need for them to be in this quote unquote studio all the time. So we're given a little more access to our development and marketing people at, at the time. Paul, you've done a lot. You, you really have um, it's kind of like you set the standard of just, you're just gonna you have all these things going on. I have a question. After this is all over, and it will be over, as we've talked about, this all this curriculum you've created, all this energy you've created around the Zoom and creativity, would that be in addition to what you do in the studio, or would that be just mm. something you did for now and then you're going to continue? No, it's a great question, and I, I have to mention that our school's faculty and our, our the director of the school who's the associate artistic director his name is Nick Mulliken he is just amazing we've, we've launched a virtual training program and you know all of our students are been have been taking class they don't they really hardly missed a class at all so they and their parents are, are pretty pretty happy because they are getting direction from us it's not just sort of like you know here and there but they actually are getting classes so <clears throat> to ask, answer your question about what happens in the future you know one of our strategies from you know i am actually really big into street strategic planning which you can probably tell and the company is too and um the whole organization the board the staff and one of the um um think we, we plan about uh, we're in the fifth year for fourth or fifth year of a plan that needs to be revised but in the plan was 
working on having a bigger digital presence. Mm -hmm. um, and because of the way we kind of think, the ethos of ballet companies, we just don't think digitally that much. We think live and I, I mean, I understand why. So this is really kind of forcing us to think in a different way, the situation. So I, I know that a lot of this stuff is going to keep going in, in different ways. I mean, we did a, you know, we were really fortunate. I had already been working on a, uh, we called it a choreographed film with this musical artist named Rhiannon Giddens. We'd already been working on that before this happened. We actually filmed it at the very, very beginning of March here and were able to release it as the first thing in our digital oh, wow. series. And it was, and it was like, it's a real video. You should look for it. It's actually quite good. It's, it's, cool. a, yes. it's, a, it's a really directed and produced uh, dance little dance film it's about seven minutes long so all that to say is you know we'll be doing more of this and I, i'm interested in exploring you know what choreography on film actually can look like i mean a lot of people have done it obviously there's mm -hmm. tons of dance films out there but but for us um and for me artistically i haven't really uh been able to find it i, I actually find the price process of editing a lot like choreography uh, you're, you're, you, you do it. You're, you're when you when you're choreographing. You're constantly editing material and trying to find its essence. So it's a, it's very similar. I mean, you don't have, you know, as a as a choreographer, you don't have the ability to do groups in one space, but you have the ability to put groups together within the context of your kind of virtual space. It's really interesting. You know, Paul. Um, it, it, what's interesting is that you've kept to your mission. And it sounds like the community of Nashville has has embraced your mission of what you're doing with the with this technology. The dancers have embraced what you're doing. The board is embracing as a team, as an organization. You've embraced the scenario and doing the best you can so that when it is over, that you've actually almost as stronger, almost stronger because of it. I, I I think well I mean I think everybody in the world is going to be stronger because <laughs> yes. of this thing. Yes. We're all trying. We're all having to kind of deal with it. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> totally unprecedented uh, life experiences for pretty much everybody. So um, yes, and and um, you know the way we think about dance and the way we think about um, how we present it is yeah is changing. Changing. You know. Um, I'm going to finish this interview by saying thank you very much for participating in this. You said it, it, it's it's um, very pertinent for what you, for the scenario now, and people need to hear that strategic planning actually is really important, and to look at the team and to create a strategic a strategy, even at a time when we don't know what that strategy is, yeah. at least try strategy, right? That is right, and it, you're, I like that you said team because it is really about that from <clears throat> pretty much from soup to nuts, you know, from the uh, the board all the way down and, and then back up. There's there there is a feeling of we're in this together, and so it's not just me and Lisa uh, figuring this out. It's everybody's minds and thoughts and questions, and you know, we're actually you know, of course, looking at our colleagues around the country who are also grappling with all of the same issues and trying to listen to what they're doing and and um, kind of make it work within the context of where we are right now. And, and you know, Paul, um, doing this type of thing, hearing all these stories from different companies and dancers, it feels like the dance community is going to widen up. It's going to get wider. Mm -hmm. So we're almost becoming a bigger type of team mm -hmm. that maybe we didn't even realize we had. So. Okay. Yeah, we're all trying to figure it out together. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you very much for doing this, Paul. Mr. Yep. Mr. Paul Masterleg, who is the artistic director of Nashville Ballet. Great conversation. And it's good to see you again, Paul. Same here. Thanks, Brian. Good to see okay. you. Okay. All right. Bye-bye now. Bye.